Hello, and welcome to another episode in the GD Script Fundamental Tutorial Series. In this episode, we will be talking about classes. Now, what exactly is a class? A class describes the contents of the objects that belong to it. Classes describe an aggregate of data fields such as variables and defines the operations such as methods. Now, think of a class as a blueprint for creating objects with initial value states and implementation of behavior. Now, by default, all script files are unnamed classes. This means that you can only reference them by using the file's path name, by either using an absolute or relative path. Now, if you're not familiar with absolute and relative paths, you can think of an absolute path as basically what you would type in your operating system when you want to access a file. You start in, well, in Windows computers, you start with your data hard drive, the letter, most cases it's C colon followed by your file path. And on Macs and Linux, you start with the forward slash followed by users slash name. Now, it can get pretty complicated using absolute paths all the time to let your scripts know where to find your class files. So GDScript actually makes it very easy by using the shorthand res, res colon two forward slashes. What you're essentially doing is telling the compiler that you want to use an absolute path that gets to your current Godot project folder. Basically, it gets you to the root folder of your GDScript project. Now, a relative path, on the other hand, will start on the folder of the file you're using it in. To start a relative path, you just simply use the dot notation. The dot notation basically tells the compiler that you want to start your file path from the current folder that your script is inside of. Now, if you want to go a folder above, you'll use two periods. If you want to go to a folder beneath you, you'll just simply call out the folder name in your file path. Now, this is an example of how you would use file paths with your classes. You can use file paths to extend or rather inherit a class, or you can create an instance of an object by using a file path. Now, this is fine for small projects. However, imagine if a folder or rather your folder hierarchy grows. Well, it's gonna get cumbersome. So there's a cleaner way of inheriting or simply creating an instance of an object. And that is by registering your scripts. Now to register your script, all you have to do is use the class underscore name keyword followed by a unique name as seen here, class underscore name keyword. This will basically register your class name as a new type in Godot's editor. You can also add an icon image by using a comma followed by the image location. This will allow you to use unique custom images for your registered classes or scripts. After you register a script or class, you can use the new registered name in other scripts. So instead of using the file path as our previous slideshow showed, you can instead just call the name of the script. In this case, we named it player. So we just use player. And when creating an instanced object, we just simply call player.new function. That was probably new seeing the new function. And that's basically what you use when you want to instance a class. You use the class function new to instance a class. And you don't have to worry about creating this function because it's built right into the class when you create new scripts. In this case, we have a variable a, our class name, followed by the dot notation, followed by the new function. It's as simple as that when you want to instance a new object. Now, this is what a basic class format looks like in GDScript. First, you inherit. It can be a script or a global class such as node. You can have member variables that are accessible everything in your class file. And at last you have your functions that you can use. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that member variables can be declared anywhere in your class file. You could put it at the bottom if you wanted to, and it would still be accessible in our ready function, specifically in our print statement. However, it's good practice to keep your member variables towards the top of your class file. Now, one thing to note is inheritance. To inherit from another class or file, what you use is the extends keyword. The extends keyword, you can think of it as the lifeblood of your class. It lets you use Godot's global classes and use their methods. To inherit, you use the extends keyword again, 
followed either by a file path or the global name of a class. Now, basically, the definition of an inheritance is that an inheritance is a mechanism where you can derive a class from another class for a hierarchy of classes that share a set of attributes and methods. Let's take this flowchart, for example. We have our globally accessible node class, and we inherit that through the extends keyword in our player GD file. What this means is that member variables in the node class and methods in the node class can be used by our player script. Now, inheritance in Godot works as the following. You can inherit from a global class such as node, you can inherit from another class file, and you can inherit from an inner class inside another class file. One thing to note is that multiple inheritance is not allowed. Now, one thing you probably don't know or probably never heard about is inner classes. And basically, a class file in GDScript can contain inner class. Inner classes are defined using the class keyword. They can be instanced just like regular classes by using the new function. As you can see, this is what a inner class would look like in GDScript. You would have the class keyword followed by a unique name. Keep in mind that you need to have indentation in your script. Now, inner classes act like regular classes and can have member variables and functions inside them. When you see this code function underscore ready method, have you ever wondered what exactly this is? You've probably seen it in, you might have seen this in my GitHub files. You might have seen this in other tutorials. You probably even know how to use it. But do you really understand what's going on behind the scenes when you see this function or any function with an underscore that you never created in your class? Well, basically what this is called is a virtual method. Now, in short summary, a virtual method is a method that can be redefined in derived classes. Now a virtual method has an implementation and a base class. Basically this method was created in the base class and when you inherit it, you also have this method in your derived class. Now you use virtual methods when a method's basic functionality is the same, but sometimes more functionality is needed in the derived class. As you can see, we have classes. We have a base class and a derived class. Derived class can also be referred to as a subclass. What that basically means is that when we inherit a base class into our derived class, basically using the extends keyword, what we are doing is taking the member variables in the base class and their methods, and we are now able to use it in our derived class. Let's go ahead and take a look at a virtual function example. As you can see, we have our node class, and it has implemented a ready function. Now, Let's just go ahead and think about this ready function as having nothing inside. It's a method that's been declared. It can be used by the Godot engine, but it doesn't do anything. Now imagine you've decided that in your player file, you not only want to use this method and its functionality, but you also want to add more functionality. And most of the time when you call this function in your class files, you do intend to use more functionality. Now what this method does, Godot engine does, is instead of running the code in the base class, which does nothing, it instead chooses to run your function. That's one way to look at it. Now, virtual functions are actually quite complex and out of scope for this episode. However, I hope now that when you use functions that are derived from your base class, such as underscore ready, along with other functions you're probably using, that you now understand what Godot is doing under the table again. Well, that's all I have for you in this episode. Please download the GitHub file that I've linked down in the description. It has a few examples of how you can use classes. So go ahead and play around with that. I also hope you learned a lot in this episode. We went over quite a lot. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.